Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and back to the legendary 307,000 mile Volvo XC90, which I bought extremely cheaply on Copart. And today, and I'm sorry it's taken so long, we're going to be driving this thing. Now, the reason it's taken me a while to do this is when it got dropped off to me about a week ago or so, I couldn't actually tax the car, which I need to do to legally drive it on the road. And the reason for that is because Copart sent me the incorrect V5 reference number, which is what you need to go online and tax the vehicle. And so I had to wait until the working week, which is now, until I could go to a post office and do it there. I still haven't quite gotten to the bottom of what happened with the V5, but anyway, that's another story. But it does mean today I can drive it out on the road, which I've been super, super keen and anxious to do actually, because this thing's just been sat on the driveway for about a week, looking a bit sorry for itself. It clearly needs some financial attention. And well, I wasn't going to pull the trigger on any sort of parts or repairs until I've actually driven the thing. Because what if it's an absolute bag of nails and horrible car and I really don't like it? So that's what we're going to be finding out today anyway. And hopefully that's not the case. Now, if you haven't seen this car yet, well, there's been a couple of videos already. Number one, we revealed it and I showed you some of the really impressive quirks and features and stuff inside the car because this is actually the executive model. So go ahead and watch that. The links will be in the description, but also you can click up here on the top right hand side of the screen right now if you want to watch that one. And then secondly, the amazing guys at Topaz Detailing came over to my house and gave this thing a complete refresh. I mean, I cannot believe the difference, especially on the inside. It now looks literally brand new in there. It's it's quite crazy, complete and utter transformation. So if you want to see what they did to get it looking as good as it does now, then you can click in the top right hand side of the screen to watch that one. But anyway, that's enough talking. Let's get to actually driving this thing. I really want to see what it's like. And so I can't wait so without any further ado. Let's get on with it, shall we? say a huge thank you to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Now, Babbel is a language learning app that teaches you to speak, read and listen in new languages. And there's many reasons that you might want to learn a new language. But for me, it harks back to a time when I was young in France, my family, we were at a restaurant, we thought we were ordering cheesy pasta. And instead, we ended up with the stinkiest imaginable plate of cheese you can possibly think of. And ever since then, I thought, wouldn't it be useful to actually know a language like French. And I never really found a useful or time efficient way of learning a language until Babbel came along. So Babbel is scientifically proven to help you start speaking a new language in three weeks. The language lessons are designed by real world language teachers and Babbel offers a 20 day money back guarantee. For me, Babbel has facilitated me finally getting on with it and beginning to learn new languages and it's doing it in a really fun and quite intuitive way. So if you'd like to give it a go, which I strongly encourage you to do, go ahead and click the link below in my description. You can get yourself 60% off. Thanks so much to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to it. Well, here we are then for the first drive in my 800 pound, 307,000 mile Volvo XC90. I have to keep looking down at the odometer every time I say that because it's almost disbelief. So I've been very anxious and keen to get it up and running so that I, I can see what the car's like. Because as we've talked about in previous episodes already, there's a few bits and bobs that are wrong with the car. Now, mechanically speaking, there was an issue with the battery. The car wasn't really starting, but I managed to trickle charge it and I think revive the battery and it seems okay. The front right tire was flatter than a pancake. I mean, I've never seen anything quite like it, but with some air in after a few days now, it's not losing it. So there was a couple of bits like that, which I wasn't really sure about, but I've managed to get them sorted and get the car legal so that I can drive it. Now this car obviously is in need of some cosmetic attention, doesn't look fantastic. And also I have an issue where all the infotainment inside the car is inactive, probably due to a breakdown in the fiber optic can bus system 
somewhere. So obviously I'm super keen to actually drive the thing properly because if I drive it now and, and really don't like it, then is there much point in spending tons of money to get this thing back to its best? Maybe not for me. So here we are now anyway, we're up to 45 miles an hour, which is the fastest I've driven in this thing. And I have to say immediately, uh, we have a bit of a tracking issue. Uh, I think the wheel is probably at about 15 degrees to the right when we're going straight. So there's obviously a problem there. It could be a number of things, but I'm not too sure obviously from just jumping in it now. We've got an ABS warning light now. I'd seen that before. It's a bit temperamental, it goes off and on. But if I do just jab the brakes from 40 to 30, the car has no problem in stopping and we have plenty of brake fluid. So I'm not too worried about that. There's also plenty on the pads. Discs look like they might need replacing, but we do have the ability to slow down quickly if we need to. So I'm not too worried about that. The other very apparent thing, and that's a nice little demonstration there, is this is a noisy engine. Now, I knew that from researching these cars before I ever had one, that this earlier 2.4 diesel is pretty noisy. And it would be because this is a really heavy car. We're closer to three tons than we are to two. And this thing only makes 163 horsepower. My Audi TT makes more than that. And so of course, this engine's gonna be screaming its nuts off just trying to get you away from a stop. What I can merit it with though is just the feel you get from the pedals is so lovely because the power there is, is instantaneous, whatever power it is. And I just, I just love that diesel feeling of, of endless torque. So it does pull away nicely. You've got instant power, but it does make a good old racket about it and let everyone know that <laughs> That you're moving. The handling itself feels a little bit bizarre actually. I don't think I've ever experienced anything quite like it. I mean this is the first Volvo I've ever driven so maybe it's a Volvo thing. Maybe it's something to do that this car was 800 quid and has 300,000 miles on it. I mean any comments I make about how this car feels I think you have to take with a pinch of salt and potentially not class it as a representative conclusion of the XC90 because this is quite possibly the worst example of an XC90. But the handling feels very strange um, and a bit like it's got a, a mind of its own. Not that it's wandering all over the place, but the actual feel, the sort of motor feel and the vibration you feel through the, through the wheel itself, it just it feels a bit strange and uh, like there's varying degrees of input needed as you, as you go through a turn. So if you're turning a little bit, it sort of has a weight to it. But then if you turn a little bit more, the steering gets a bit light. And it feels like that is part of the car. And I'm not sure I like it so much. Otherwise it's slow speeds just maneuvering around town. It's pretty, pretty light and really nice. Actually you can drive it in one hand and it doesn't feel as big as the car is actually. It feels relatively small. The one thing I will say on that though is I am very much aware at the length of it and I think because I have seven seats although they're not up at the moment you can just see stuff so far back into the car it does just make you feel that it's a very long car which it is but in terms of the width actually it's not anywhere near as intimidating as you might think to drive. It is <laughs> fantastically slow this thing I mean that was 0 to 50 in uh, a number of weeks <laughs> it is brilliantly slow um, and yeah absolutely screaming there to get up to 50 miles per hour but it is pleased to say it seems to all be there nonetheless I mean it's absolutely remarkable and a testament to the reliable nature of these cars the thing I've noticed actually driving is the seating position, or just the car in general, imagine you're at a water park and you're sort of sat holding, braced ready to go at the top of a, of a water slide. And it's that sort of feeling of pointing downwards a little bit. That's how it feels sitting in here. Now I've raised my seat base all the way up to be angled as much towards the sky as possible. But I just feel a bit like I'm pointing down, like slightly going downhill. 
And I think that's also due to the way that the bonnet seems to just slope away downwards from you somewhat too. And I'm not sure I really like that. It feels a bit strange. Now, when we're at 50 miles an hour, which we are now, and the engine's sort of cruising along, it's, you, can't, you can't really hear it at all, actually. And I have to say, the sound deadening in general seems to be pretty impressive in here. Now, this is the executive model, so I don't know if there was any additional sound insulation included with, with this model, but general sort of wind road noise. Oh, look, there's another XC90. Hey! <laughs> general wind and tire noise seems pretty quiet actually i mean it's quieter in terms of tire noise than that brand new l460 range rover i had a few weeks back it's really quite impressive and the actual ride quality is is very smooth you don't really feel any of the bumps through the wheel which gives you the impression that it is taking the the bumps and and lumps in the road much much better but yeah over this rough piece of tarmac here it is a very sort of smooth, flat and, and soft ride. And I'm sure this car is probably in need of lots of re refurbished and replacing uh, suspension components. So having said that, it's pretty impressive actually, the ride quality in this thing. It's also a little bit of a funny one, this Volvo XC90. As I pull onto this beautiful road and we have farms as far as the eye can see. When you're in a Range Rover, and I'm sorry to always compare it to Range Rover, but that's the only other SUV I've, I've ever owned, I think, and it's what I always think as a, as a benchmark for this sort of car. But if I was driving down here in a Range Rover, it would instantly feel at home. And then if I was to head to the town centre and, and drive through there, the Range Rover similarly would, would feel at home again. As this XC90, I'm not quite sure where it belongs. I mean, I guess it is a motorway, isn't it? It's a, it's a businessman's express but then with this having such an underpowered engine i can't really be bothered to get to 70 miles an hour because it will just take so long i mean don't get me wrong it drives down this road perfectly well and it it works but it just doesn't feel quite right do you know what i mean and i can't think of a place where it would feel right i have to say after doing 20 30 miles in this car today getting under its skin a little bit i'm quite conflicted and I am bearing in mind that, imagine a thousand pounds was spent on this car and the steering was fixed and the wing mirror over there was perfect and the radio was coming alive. I'm bearing all of that in mind, but even so, I'm not sure I love this thing. I really didn't like the engine to start with. I thought it was just ridiculously underpowered for the size of the car, which it is, and it was really noisy. But once you're above sort of 40 miles an hour and you're cruising along and the engine calms down a bit, it's actually fine. And I can't really hear the diesel clacking away now. It's got enough torque when you're at slightly higher speeds. And I can't help really but not mind it ever so much. I, I really think it's made up for the fact by, it's got, it's got such a lovely power delivery. I know it's a weird thing to say in a tiny little diesel like this, but the throttle response is instantaneous and it it is just quite yeah it's quite a nice engine to use i have to say even though half an hour ago i didn't really like it i really like the instrument cluster it's just so unfussy very simple very functional but i guess that is that's pretty swedish is that a stereotype i don't know but you know i've been to sweden quite a few times and it is very functional and simple there's no excess there's nothing more than you really need and you feel that looking at the instrument cluster. It's really lovely actually, even down to just the font on the speedo and the rev counter. I just like it. I have to admit actually, I'm very, very impressed and really like this gearbox. I feel like lots of bad things have been said about it, but you just don't, I haven't even noticed this whole time I've been filming that we've been changing gears. It's a really seamless box actually. What happens if I put it into manual? So in, fifth i think it's a five speed isn't it that's all we have let's go down into third up into fourth yeah i mean i would never use the manual gearbox so it doesn't really matter but it shifts pretty well but yeah just in auto mode it's very very smooth very impressively smooth actually like i've not i've not noticed 
its existence this this whole time. So I have to give some credit where it's due. The gearbox in this is brilliant. This is one of those sealed for life gearboxes as well, which it's debatable, isn't it? But I think at 307,000 miles, you, you're gonna want a, a service on it. Although apparently with these, if you are gonna service them, they need to have been serviced sort of every 40 to 60,000 miles or so. Otherwise, if I was to just service this at 300K for the first time ever, it might actually cause more problems than it solves. But regardless, it, it feels very smooth and doesn't trouble me at all. I am completely stupid though, I'm my own worst enemy because I have to say, I drove this car for the first time yesterday and I said to Katie when I sat down in the evening, I said, I don't really like it. It's a shame, I really wanted to like it. But I think I'm gonna get rid of it because I just don't wanna spend a thousand pounds getting it fixed because I, I didn't really like the way it drove anyway. And the engine's a bit rubbish and it's noisy and it's not a Range Rover. But after driving it today for this video, I'm starting to sort of get it a bit more and I, I do like it, I think which is a problem because uh, before filming this, I was thinking I would probably not like it today again and, and want to get rid of it. I don't like the driving position, I have to say. I wish all of this stuff worked, but I can't really blame that on the XC90 as a whole. The seats are very comfortable. I feel a bit like Natalie in Bruglia because I'm torn. I can't tell if I like this car or not. I like the fact it cost 800 quid and I like the fact it's got 307,000 miles on it. I feel like I'm driving a coffin. It shouldn't really be on the road, should it? But I don't know if I really like it and I really want to spend some money on this thing. It'll need new tires. It might want some brakes. It'll need a new wing mirror. The bodywork definitely wants looking at. And of course, we've got this whole issue where I can't use the sat nav, the radio, I can't see some of the screens on the instrument cluster. So it needs some money spent on it. And if I spend one, two thousand pounds getting this thing back up to scratch, then at the end of the day, I've still got a almost 20 year old XC90 with 307,000 miles on it. But then it is the executive model and there's not that many of those around. The other thing as well is that the MOT at the time of filming this video expires in less than a month. I think there's three weeks left on it or something like that. And so I think I've only really got two options. Number one is I put it up on Facebook Marketplace now when I get home for a little bit more than I paid for it and see if someone wants to take it along as a spares or repairs project. Although I have to say it, it drives, apart from the tracking, it's driving really nicely or I wait till the MOT, see what it needs to get through, and then take out some work on it, use it as a runaround for a year. Maybe I could drive it to Sweden. I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts as ever, guys, and thank you also for watching this video. I genuinely had sort of planned what I was gonna say about the things I don't like from the way it drives, what I experienced yesterday but now I've sort of doubled the mileage I've done in the car. I do feel a little bit conflicted and, and different to how I felt before, but maybe that's just because I just, I get so emotionally attached to cars. It's not good, is it? It's not good at all, but there we go. Thank you so much for watching guys. Do comment below your thoughts. Like the video if you enjoy uh, this content with the XC90 and make sure you're subscribed for more videos to come next week. Thank you so much and I'll see you all very, very soon. <laughs>